Welcome to Masters of Light, the series where we sit down with the work of some of the most prolific photographers of all time. We try to figure out what made them so great. Today's episode is all about Joel Meyerowitz. I want to preface this video firstly by saying that Joel is one of my personal favorite photographers. So it's important to mention that bias when I'm talking about my impressions, opinions and interpretations of this man's incredible work. So with all that said, let's begin. For the greater part of six decades, Joel Meyerowitz has consistently created some of the most influential images in the entire world. His work as a photographer has changed with almost every single project he takes on, from photographing the streets of New York City in the 1960s to creating a series of self-portraits documenting the later years of his life in a global pandemic. But as far as the greats go, Joel is, in my opinion, a cut above the rest. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through the chapters of Joel's work in my attempt to justify why he is undeniably, unequivocally, and without a damn doubt, the absolute GOAT. In 1962, Joel was an entirely different man altogether. As a studied painter, he worked as a junior art director in an ad agency in New York City. He was a graphic designer and he knew very little about the world of photography. But when he designed a small booklet in need of some images, his boss at the agency hired a photographer called Robert Frank to shoot the photographs. At the time, Joel didn't even know who Robert Frank was. But in that studio, watching Robert Frank work with the camera, Joel was mesmerized by the interaction. He saw that Robert Frank could move while making photographs and he could capture the moments between time that made everything click. He was astounded watching Robert Frank in that photography studio. So much so that later that day, he resigned from his work at the ad agency, picked up a film camera loaded with color film and begun shooting the streets of New York City in the 1960s. At the time, photography was an entirely different ball game altogether. It was basically utilitarian and purpose driven regarded as more of a craft than an actual art form, and the greats of the greats only basically shot in black and white. Color film was renegated as a consumer film for casuals, much like Loma Purple and the Kodak Golds of today's standards. I never understood this stigma of color film and why the greats of the greats shot black and white back in the day, and neither did Joel Meyerowitz. This early work of Joel's is some of his finest, in my opinion. His focus is so laser set on the boundaries of the photograph and what he fills that frame with. It's very difficult for me to comprehend the fact that this is work from a man who's just picked up his first camera, who barely knows anything about the world of photography. It's absolutely insane how much meaning and ambiguity is layered in these images for someone who's essentially a beginner. Part of what I think makes great photography great is the timing of the shot. And Joel nailed that incredibly quickly. Joel Meyerowitz is commonly regarded as one of the greatest street photographers of all time, 
but honestly i feel like this is only a tiny part of what he is actually capable of Entre chien et loup means between dog and wolf, and it was a phrase used by one of Joel's friends to describe his work of the changing coastal light in his series, Cape Light. It's an odd term to use to talk about the changing coastal light, but in its poetic way, it refers to the time between times, twilight essentially, where you don't really know what time of day it is. In this study of light, Joel let go of everything that he learned on the streets of New York City and decided to pursue a new type of photography where he made the light of the image the subject of his photographs. In isolation, these images can appear empty or purposeless, almost as if they were made aimlessly by an absolute beginner. But as a collection, compared and contrasted against each other, the intent behind the photograph becomes a lot more evident. Joel is capturing all of the personas of light itself. And when we study these images, we see tiny details, the changing color between the different shots, the tiny boats in the foreground or the lights across the bay. You can see Joel's work here bending in service of concept and subject. He's willing to completely let go of everything that he learned photographing the streets in order to change his style to best serve what he is photographing. The next chapter of Joel's work that I'd like to discuss was shot again in New York City some four or five decades later. In 2001, Joel didn't know it at the time, but he was going to be making some of his most important work of his entire career. When tragedy hit the streets of New York City, Joel felt a calling to go and make photographs of this incredibly fateful moment in American history. Without photographs, there would be no evidence, and without evidence, there would be no history. Let's take a look at this image, for example. Without context to the average person, this image could appear redundant. Seemingly, it's just a man looking for something in a construction site. But when I tell you that this photograph was taken at ground zero, it becomes something altogether different. When you realize that in the aftermath of the attack, any remains of the victims were kept and catalogued in an attempt to identify the casualties. When you notice the rake at the man's side and you realize that it was used to peel back the layer of dirt just to give a grieving family closure, this photograph becomes a masterclass in compassion. 
this image single-handedly outlines the care and the consideration that the people who were responsible for the cleanup of New York City took just to build that city up back after it had been burned. This is the triumph of New York City rising from the ashes. I have such a deep admiration for this particular work of Joel Meyerowitz because it conveys the best and worst parts of our human story. The tragedy of hate and the everlasting beauty of good. Joel shot these images in a way that nobody else could because he was a New Yorker, because he knew what it all meant. He felt called to make these images as a responsibility and I take my hat off to him for creating this incredible work. The most striking thing for me about Joel's work is ultimately his versatility. He's managed to follow so many avenues of photography, it's very difficult to pinpoint what kind of photography he is, if that's even necessary. Today we all know what type of photographer we are. Instagram has made that very clear. He's the landscape guy or she's the girl who creates these incredible portraits. But Joel's work flies in the face of this very idea. For him, photography is in service of something deeper than style. It's about the idea. It is such a gift that we all share the same world and the same time as somebody like Joel Meyerowitz. We're incredibly lucky to have him as a beacon of hope for the photography community and we can learn so much more than how to take a good photograph from Joel. There's so much I haven't had a chance to talk about in this video, so much of Joel's career that would only fit into multiple episodes of Masters of Light, but in closing I'd like to leave you with the words of Joel himself. Well. You've been very good, all of you. You've been very patient. Uh, uh, this is the last picture. It's a self-portrait. <laughs> and um, it's where I find myself now. And in the course of my life, photography has helped me find myself in any and every different way. And it is a medium that I... I I bow down to for the gift that it's given me. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Masters of Light. It's incredibly fun for me to work so hard on making these videos for everybody. If you'd like to support me, or the channel, there's a link to my buy me a coffee, which is below the like button. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all in the next video.